Hey, welcome to Church at Home, and I want to give a very special welcome to anybody that may be joining us for the very first time. Welcome. You are our honored guest, and I also want to give a very special welcome to all those that call Queen City Church home. I want you to know that I love you, that I miss you, that I'm praying for you, and that I cannot wait to see you. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to hug all y'all. I'm telling you, the PDA, when we get back to church in person, is going to be so strong. And so I just want to tell you that you picked a great day to be at church at home, uh, that we have a powerful service in store over the next few minutes, that we're going to spend some time in worship. But then after worship, we're going to have a very special time of communion. And so if you want to take just a moment to go to your kitchen and grab something that you can take communion with, maybe for the bread, you, you have a piece of bread, or you can grab some crackers, or if you're a parent, just steal one of your kids' goldfish, or maybe if you're eating a Pop-Tart, that will work. Or for the juice, you, maybe you have juice in your home or you can grab water, coffee. Or if you just want to go grab a Dr. Pepper, that'll work. You do you. But it's going to be a powerful time of communion. And then we're going to hear a message from God's Word. I'm telling you, it's going to be a great day. But I want to encourage you with this one verse today from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. And here's what it says. It says, be thankful in all circumstances. That means on good days, be thankful. On bad days, be thankful. On blah days, be thankful. And even days where you're stuck at home during a global pandemic on quarantine, still be thankful. And I want to be the type of person, and I want us to be the type of church that is always thankful, that no matter the circumstances, that we can always be grateful, that even right now, we have so much to be thankful for, that, we're, that we can be thankful for the amazing miracle of technology, that we can be thankful that we get to spend this time together, that we can be thankful for our church, that we can be thankful for Jesus. Because here's what I've learned. Being thankful and being grateful has a way of shifting your perspective to where it really needs to be. So as we go into worship, come on, let's posture our hearts in a thankful, just being thankful. So why don't you lift your hands and let's pray. God, we love you. We are so thankful for you. We enter your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. And we have a grateful heart today. So God, we give you a, our very best. God, we don't give you our leftover praise. We give you our very best because it is what you deserve. We are so grateful today. And it's through the awesome, powerful, mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Come on, guys. Let's worship.
time of worship. And uh, like Pastor Brian mentioned, we're gonna take communion together as a church family. And um, I know it might seem a little different to do virtual communion, uh, but it's such an important part of our church and we value it so much. And so we wanted to make sure to do that together during this time. And um, we see communion throughout several different parts of scripture. One of those is Luke chapter 22. And in that scripture, Jesus is gathering together with his disciples, which are his closest friends. And he basically, he takes the bread and he takes the cup and he says, this is my body, the bread. It represents my body that was broken for you. And then he takes the cup and then, and they drink it together. And he said, this represents my blood um, that was shed for you. It's a sacrifice for you. And in that moment, in that scripture, um, Jesus says something, and I've been thinking about it all week. And he says, do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. And I've been thinking about that. That's why we still do communion to this day, because we're remembering. And um, as I've been reading through the Bible this year, I've, I've just noticed over and over how much that God tells his people to remember. I've never noticed it before, but I've noticed that so much this year. It's actually one of the most like common words in all of scripture is the word remember. And I think the reason that God tells us to remember is that because as humans, um, we have a tendency to forget. We forget, we forget what God has done for us. And so he reminds us and he tells us to remember to bring it back to our mind again. And so today, as we take communion together, I'd love to encourage you just to take a moment to remember God. It's so easy in, in the circumstances that are in our world right now to be so consumed uh, with everything that's going on, with the media, with the news, with, with just everything going on in your life and in my life. It's so easy just to be consumed with that and so easy to forget everything that God has done for us. And so I just would love for you to take a moment to just to reflect, to think about God, to think about everything that he's done for you. Um, he's the God who loves us beyond anything that we can even understand. Um, he's given us grace. He gives us peace. Um, he gives us hope. He's our protector. He's our provider. He's the God that's been faithful to us in any situation, in any season of our life. And so as we take that with that in mind, I'd love to have for you to have those thoughts as we take the elements um, together. So let's go ahead and take of the bread together. And let's go ahead and take of the cup together as well. Let's pray. So God, we just thank you so much for who you are. And Jesus, we take a moment today as a church family in all the different places that we are. And God, we just want to say thank you. God, as, we, as you bring those things to mind, God, as we remember you today, just as Pastor Brian said, it brings so much thankfulness to our lives, so much perspective to our lives. So God, we honor you today. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for the cross. God, we remember what that means for our lives, that you've given us life, the best life, the most fulfilling life. God, and we thank you that you're faithful, that you're good to us. God, that you're a kind God. Lord, that you've never uh, withheld anything from us, God, and you're taking care of every single detail of our lives. So God, we honor you again today. We thank you for who you are. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, we want to say again, we're so glad um, that you've joined us for Church at Home. And I just want to mention a few things to you just so that you're aware. Um, in the top right-hand corner of the screen, if you're watching live with us today, there's a couple of things that I want to point out to you. The first is this is our connection card. So if you're joining us for the first time or you've never filled out that card before, we'd love for you to take some time just to fill that card out. Um, it's a safe card. We just would love uh, to connect with you in that way. So we're just going to send you some information about our church. 
Um, very simple and easy to do. So we'd love for you to take some time to do that. Also, you'll notice that there's a place where you can submit a prayer request. And so we'd love, wh whether that's big or small, whatever is going on in your life right now, we would love to take some time and be able to pray for you. So you can definitely do that. Click on those links um, and, and take some time to fill those things out. If you're watching on demand, uh, you can actually go to our website, queencitypeople.com. You'll see the same links in the top right-hand corner of our website for the connection card and prayer request as well. Also, church family, want to make sure that you know um, that you can find all the up-to-date information about what is going on in our church right now at queencitypeople.com slash updates. Um, so we update that frequently with the most up-to-date information. Um, so there's resources there for you. Um, if you want to help with the initiatives and the things that our church is doing right now to serve our city um, and people in our city, you can sign up for that there. If if you have needs, uh, you can sign up anything that you would, you have those needs there, fill that form out. There's a form there you can fill out. We'd love to help you in any way that we can. Um, so again, queencitypeople.com slash updates. Make sure that you check that out. And last is this, before we move into the message today, uh, we're going to move into our 60 second countdown. This is one of my favorite parts um, of our service. And so we'd love for you to take some time just to connect uh, for the next 60 seconds. So you can connect with someone you live with, your family or a roommate. Um, take some time to send a text to someone that you love or that you miss um, or, or whatever you'd like to do. You can throw something in the chat right now to connect with the people that are there as well, and then we'll move right into the message. Again, welcome to church. We're so glad that you're here. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to John chapter 15. It's where we're going to hang out today. And before we jump into the message, I did want to give a few updates of things that are happening at our church. And next week, I don't know if you know this, but next week is Easter Sunday, and I'm so excited about next week. Our team is working so hard behind the scenes to make sure that next Sunday is a very special day for our church. So I wanna encourage you to make sure that you are with us next Sunday for Easter, because listen, we may be in our homes, but we are still going to celebrate the fact that Jesus is not dead, that the stone is rolled away, that the tomb is empty, and come on, Jesus, is alive. And I also wanted to let you know that there are so many awesome, exciting things that are happening behind the scenes where we are loving and serving people in our city and small businesses in our city and families that are in need in our city. And, and really, we're just meeting a lot of tangible needs. And the cool thing is, is that God is opening up new doors literally almost every single day. And by the way, if you have a specific need, or if you have a very specific prayer request that we can be praying for, please let us know. If we can help, we want to help. So you can go to queencitypeople.com slash updates, and there you can find all types of updates and resources that can really help you during this season. But also there's some online forms there. So if you need help or if you need prayer, right there at queencitypeople.com slash updates is where you can do that. And I just want you to know that all of that is possible 
because of your faithful generosity. And so from the bottom of my heart, I want you to hear this for real. Thank you so much for your incredible generosity, for your faithful generosity. And just know that your, that your giving is making a massive difference right now. And that it is not just leading to tangible needs being met, but it is leading to changed lives. And so today, if you would like to give, there's two ways that you can do that today. One, you can give online at queencitypeople.com slash give, or you can give by text if you'll text Queen City to 77977. And like always, please feel no pressure, but I do encourage you to pray and ask God if and what you should give and then just obey. We like to put it this way, that generosity is our privilege. And finally, before we jump into the message, I do want to remind you of something that is true, that this, what we're going through right now, that this is a season. It is a season. And all seasons, good and bad, end. Can I get a good amen from the Bengals fans right now? The good ones and the bad ones, they all end. All seasons, good and bad, end. And this season will not last forever. No season ever does. So let's keep on loving each other. Let's keep on serving each other and praying for each other. Let's keep on caring. Let's keep on having each other's backs. Let's keep reaching out. Let's keep meeting needs. Let's keep calling and texting and FaceTiming and Zooming. Let's keep refusing to live life alone. And I promise you, we will get through this and we will get through this together. So let's jump into the message. We're in week six of a seven week series that we're calling Jesus in his own words, where we are looking at the seven I am statements found in the fourth book of the New Testament in the gospel of John, where seven different times Jesus tells us who he is in his own words. And here's our big idea of this series. The big idea of this series is that when we know who Jesus is, we see who he is calling us to be. In other words, that when we understand who he is, that it really helps us understand who we are. And in this series, you need to know that we are really leaning into one of our 10 values as a church, that Jesus is our message. That's one of our values. It's one of the things that makes us uniquely us as part of our DNA as a church, that Jesus is our message. And you need to understand that our message is not behavior modification, that our message is not this long list of do's and don'ts, that our message is not rules and regulations, that our message is not self-help, our message is not opinion, our message is not Republican or Democrat, our message is, and always will be Jesus. And listen, whether we are gathering in person at Withrow High School, or whether we're doing church at home online during a stay at home order where we are quarantined in our house, that will not change. Jesus is our message. And today we're gonna be looking at our next Jesus in his own words statement found in John 15, where we find Jesus talking to his disciples. And this is the night before he was arrested and betrayed and sent to the cross to pay for for our sins. And this is what he says in John 15, starting in verse one. He says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. And he says it again in verse five, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you 
can do nothing. And so today we're going to be talking about that statement. I am the true vine. Won't you write that down? I am the true vine. Let's pray. God, we love you. We thank you for today. We thank you for your word that it's alive and it's active. God, I pray that you help us see Jesus today, that you help us see and understand Jesus as the true vine. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, My wife, Heather, and I We love, 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 love to go to New York City. It's one of our favorite places in the in the entire world to go on vacation. And when I go on vacation, I like two things are very important to me. One, I love to eat good food. And two, I love to shop. I'm telling you, a little retail therapy is good for my soul. And New York City is one of the best places on planet Earth to do both both eat and shop. And one one of the most famous places to shop in New York City is Fifth Avenue. And it's known, Fifth Avenue is known for having some of the greatest designers in the entire world, like Prada and Armani and Gucci and Coach and Louis Vuitton and Saint Laurent. Yeah, I feel like I need to like twist a mustache when I say that. Saint Laurent and many more. And almost every single store on Fifth Avenue is crazy expensive. Like it's crazy expensive. And just to clarify, just to make sure that we're on the same page, I do not shop on Fifth Avenue when I go to New York, but I love to look at stuff when I go to New York on Fifth Avenue. And so, you know, you've got to stay in your financial lane. But here's the deal. You can also go a few miles south in Manhattan and shop at an area known as Canal Street. And there you can find some of the same exact designers, except for way, way, way cheaper. But here's the thing, they're not the real thing. They're a remake, they're a copy, they're a fake. And so you may think that you're getting a Prada, but in reality, you're just getting a fake Prada. You're getting a Frada. You're not getting a Louis, you're getting a Fooey. You're not gonna get you a Gucci, you're gonna get you a Fucci. And so you can get there and it's, you're, you're, you're not getting the real thing. You see, there's a big difference between the real thing and a remake. And in John chapter 15, Jesus says, I am the true vine. I am the real deal. First things first, I'm the realist. I am the true vine, meaning that there are other options available. But all those other options are remakes or substitutes or just copies. They're fakes. And Jesus says, I am am the true vine. And in these verses, Jesus uses a very extensive metaphor. And he talks about a gardener, which represents God. And this gardener takes care of a vine, which represents Jesus. And this vine has branches, which represents people. It represents you. It represents me. It represents every single person on planet earth. And these branches have the potential to produce fruit, which represents good things. And the key word in this chapter and the key word in these verses is this word remain. Maybe some of your translation says this word abide. And in the first 11 verses of John chapter 15, this word remain is used 11 times. And here's the definition of that word remain. It, what, when, when you see that word written, it means to stay connected to Jesus so that he can work in and through you to produce good things. And by the way, I cannot think of a more important time in our lives to remain in Jesus, to be connected to Jesus. In fact, I can't imagine going through all the things that we're going through right now 
without Jesus. Church, I truly believe from the bottom of my heart that it's essential for our health right now. It's essential not just for our spiritual health, but for our mental health, our emotional health, to stay connected to Jesus during this crisis, to stay connected to the true vine. And here's three reasons why it is so important to remain in Jesus, to stay connected to the true vine. Number one is that if we remain, we will live. If we remain, we will live. Think about it. If a branch remains connected to a tree, that branch stays alive. But if a branch like this one ever gets disconnected from a tree, and shout out to my two boys, Jordan and Caleb, for helping me find this today, that if a branch ever gets disconnected from a tree, it's impossible for this branch to stay alive by itself. And in this metaphor, Jesus says that if you stay connected to me, if you remain in me, you will live. Listen to me. You and I, we were never designed to live day-to-day -day life disconnected from Jesus. And I cannot encourage you enough that no matter the season of life that you're in, no matter what you're facing, no matter if you're quarantined at home all by yourself, bored out of your mind, binging on Tiger King on Netflix, that no matter what your finances are, no matter what your job situation is, whether you've been laid off or whether your hours have been cut back or maybe your job's been put on pause, no matter what your job situation is, what your financial situation is, no matter what your health situation is right now, no matter what happens, and I can't encourage this enough, you've got to stay connected to Jesus. And if you do, if you remain in Jesus, it says you will live because Jesus is the only one that can offer us eternal life forever and abundant life right now. And we've said it a thousand times in the first 80, now 82 weeks of our church. And we'll, and we'll keep saying it over and over again because we believe it heart and soul that the best possible life that you and I could ever live is found following Jesus. And let me be a little bit more specific to the season of life that we're in right now. The best possible life that we can live in this coronavirus crisis right now is found in Jesus. I want you to write down this principle that you can, you can try to live life on your own, but there's no life outside of Jesus. If we remain, we will live. Number two, if we remain, we will grow. Think about it again. If a branch remains connected to a tree, that branch has the ability to, gr to grow. But if that same exact branch ever gets disconnected from a tree, it will immediately stop growing. And Jesus says, if you stay connected to me, if you remain in me, you will grow. That means if you stay connected to Jesus, you will. Here's some good news. If you stay connected to Jesus, you will not stay the same. You will grow. And get this. Here's the awesome thing about this whole principle right here is that you don't have to focus on growing. Just focus on staying connected to Jesus and he will take care of your growing. In verse two, here in our text, he even tells us how he does this. In verse two, he says, he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. And notice the two ways that he helps us grow, cutting and pruning. And there's a big difference between cutting and pruning. Cutting is where you cut away the stuff that is dead, that's not producing fruit. But pruning is where you cut away the stuff that's alive, the stuff that is already producing fruit so that it can produce even more fruit. In other words, pruning is cutting away the good so that we can produce the best. And I just want to warn you right now that cutting and pruning, it doesn't always feel good. It's not always fun. It's definitely not comfortable. 
In fact, most of the time it hurts, but you need to hear this. It also helps and that we may not enjoy it, but we need it. And here's the principle. God cuts away what we don't need so we can become what he needs us to be. God cuts away what we don't need so we can become what he needs us to be. And here's what I found. Almost every person that I've ever met, they want to grow. I think deep down we all want to grow, but not every person wants to go through the process required to grow. But let's be a church full of people who say, yes, God, I want everything that you have for me. I want to grow. I want to say yes to growth, and I want to say yes to the process required to grow. So I challenge you this week, during this time where we are all forced to slow down, to ask yourself two questions. Here's your homework this week. Two questions I would just encourage you to ask yourself this week. Number one, what is God trying to cut off in my life? Like what needs to go away in your life and never come back? Maybe it's an unhealthy habit or an addiction. Maybe it's an unhealthy way of thinking. Maybe it's unforgiveness or low self-esteem. Maybe it's an unhealthy way of speaking like negativity or gossip. Maybe it's an unhealthy way of spending your time. But what is God trying to cut off in your life? And then here's the second question I encourage you to ask yourself this week. What is God trying to prune in my life? Like what needs to be optimized? What needs to be improved? What's good right now that needs to become great? What area in your life are you seeing fruit, but you could see more fruit? I'm telling you, ask yourself that question this week. What is God trying to prune in my life? So if we remain, we will live. If we remain, we will grow. And then number three, if we remain, we will produce fruit. And in John chapter 15, verse 5, this is where Jesus says, I'm the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, if we have a relationship, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And notice that that verse never says to produce more fruit. It only says to stay connected to Jesus. Jesus says, if you remain in me, if you stay connected to me, here's the guarantee, you will produce fruit. And in Galatians chapter five, in verse 22 and 23, it lists the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And listen to what it says. It says the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Listen, when we stay connected to Jesus, when we remain in Jesus, we will have access to this fruit. And get this, in the middle of this crisis, this is what your life could look like. That right now, your life could look like love and that you could have joy and that you could have peace. And come on, parents, you could have some patience with your kids. You could have kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. That's what your life can look like right in the middle of this crisis. It really can. That's what your life can look like. And But there's only one way that it's going to look that way. And that's remaining that's staying connected to Jesus because being connected produces fruit, but being disconnected produces nothing. Being connected, it, it, it will, it produces fruit, but being disconnected produces nothing. I want you to notice that it is impossible for a branch to produce fruit away from the tree. Like it will never happen. Doesn't matter if I watered this, it doesn't matter. Like this by itself, disconnected from the tree, will never produce fruit. It never will. But what if, and I'm gonna ask David to come help me with this because I don't have seven hands. Um, 
But what if we took this fruit and we duct taped it to this tree? Can you help me with that? I don't know if you can do that, but just go ahead and duct tape that. This, you're doing great. You're doing fantastic. And I appreciate you. You're an amazing human. And just, just what if, if we did that? We duct tape this, just make sure it's nice and firm. I don't need that falling off. What if we took this fruit and we duct taped it to this branch? Okay, so that's what we did. So this disconnected branch now has fruit, right? It's dis is disconnected from the tree, but now it has some fruit. You see like this is what it looks like to me when we try to do stuff on our own. When we try to do stuff disconnected from Jesus. Like to me, this is what it looks like to have human peace compared to having God peace. Because, you know, we can talk ourselves into having peace, but that peace is artificial, it's temporary, it's circumstantial, it's based on what's going on in our world. See, but God peace is genuine, it's lasting. It doesn't matter the circumstances. The Bible even says that it passes all our understanding, meaning that we can have peace that doesn't even make sense. Peace that deep down our circumstances are shouting, you shouldn't have peace. So to me, when I see that, I also see that this is what it looks like to have happiness, but to not have God given joy. Because happiness is based on my circumstances but joy is based on my choice. And in times like this, man, it's really hard to have happiness, but when you're connected, when you're remaining in Jesus, here's the great news, it doesn't matter how long this lasts, you can still have joy every single day. And see, when I see this, I see the difference between like human love and God's love, because human love is conditional. Like, when it's just us, we love only those that love us. And I will only love you after you love me. But God's love is totally different. God's love is unconditional. He loves everyone. And he, get this, he loves everyone even when they don't love him. So he loves you, and he loves me, and he loves every single person on the planet. And not only that, he loves first. He makes a choice to love before you love. He loves first before we ever love him. And he loves us so much that he gave his one and only son to pay for our sins just for the chance that you would have a relationship with him. Let this sink in. It is impossible for a branch to produce real lasting fruit away from the tree. And here's why, because a branch is never the source of fruit, the tree is. See, you and I, we are never the source. We're, we're never the source of the fruit. Only Jesus, the true vine, is the source of fruit. That's why he says in verse five, I am the vine, I'm the true vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So if we remain, we will live, we will grow, and we will produce fruit. I want you to bow your head and close your eyes and just ask God right there, wherever you're at, just God, what are you saying to me? What are you speaking to me? Maybe ask him this, God, what's my response to this message? But here's the big question today. Right now, right now, are you connected to Jesus? In other words, do you have a daily, consistent, growing, vibrant relationship with Jesus? And here's how you'll know. Here's how you can know, because you'll have fruit in your life. And so maybe you're here and you've never made the decision to follow Jesus, to get connected to him, to give him your life today. Here's the simple thing, just get connected. 
Or maybe you're here and you have made that decision in the past. You have been connected at one time, but now you're not. And somewhere along the way, you've gotten disconnected. Today, it's very simple. Reconnect, get connected again. And if you want to connect or reconnect, I want you to pray this right, right where you are. Just pray this in your heart. Just say, Jesus, I want to be connected to you. I love you. I need you. I'm sorry that I've lived my life without you. Will you come live inside me and change me? Do what I can't do myself and make me brand new. I surrender my whole life to you. I give you my life and I choose to follow you. I choose to remain in you the rest of my life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And if you prayed that prayer, one, you need to know we are so proud of you. We believe that is the most important decision of your life. And two, we would love to know so that we can send you some next steps. And here's how you can let us know that right now, if you're watching our live stream, that there's a button that you can click in the chat to, to let us know right now, just click that button and say, today, I made that decision. Today, I made the decision to get connected or to get reconnected to Jesus. And if you're not watching on our live stream, maybe it's later in the day on demand, you can go to our website and fill out our online connection card. And again, I just wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart for joining us for Church at Home and to stay connected um, and to get all the updates, make sure you're following us on social media and you can go to that website, queencitypeople.com slash updates. And remember, I love you, I miss you, I'm praying for you and I cannot wait to see you soon. Have an amazing week.